All right, we're going to take a look at how to use this wonderful program that we've put together for you um, to help us do linear transformations, so getting the best regression model when the data isn't actually linear. So here's an example, getting a little bit nerdy. In computer science, the time it takes for a program to run is called the runtime. Okay, and the runtime is explained generally by the size of the data set being computed. Okay? So depending on how much data I ask my computer to analyze, it will take longer to run, essentially. So here's a little sample. We've designed some algorithm, okay? and we want to figure out what's the best regression model to relate data set size, which is measured in items, and the runtime, which is measured in seconds. Okay? So first of all, just remembering, because the runtime is explained by the size of the data, that means the size is our EV, and the runtime is our RV. So we'll ask three things to do here. So first of all, determine the best regression model, again, not necessarily linear, and state the equation to three significant figures, and then using the equation to predict the runtime, and using the equation to predict um, the data size for which it takes 1 point, sorry, 0 0.15 seconds to compute. Okay? So we're going to start by opening up our transform solver. So it looks something like this, gives us our little intro page with what is on each of our pages. We're going to start with page 1.2. So here we need to enter all of our data. I'm just going to use a little bit of computer magic, but you'll have to go and manually input each of the values. All right, now it is really important to remember that you don't change the values here. You leave those as x, y. Don't try and rename them your specific variables because elsewhere in the program it calls x and y, so it's important those still be called x, y. Always when you enter a data set, data set, just scroll down a little bit okay, and make sure there aren't any dashes because if there's dashes, your program won't run correctly. Now, within the program, there's all sorts of fun pages. Here, right now, my page is showing up blank. This is my scatter plot. Again, to change the view, menu 5, 2, to zoom to your data. Looking at that, it's pretty clear. Okay, that's nonlinear. We've got a nice curve happening there. <coughs> so we are looking at nonlinear data. If we want to confirm that with a residual plot, again, zoom data. There's definitely a pattern to that residual plot, so again, we're looking at nonlinear data. We just need to decide what type of transformation. 1.5, notice it's grayed out, just don't touch it. 1.6, this is where most of the magic happens. So I've got this column where it says best r squared, and I look down until it says best. Okay. Now that's saying that log x is the best transformation. Again, we only ever do a transformation on one of x or y. So in this case, we're doing the transformation log of x, but we're leaving y as is. Okay. The reason it's best has to do with this lovely value here, the r squared. Notice it's about, sorry if I hover over it, 0.99617. That's pretty darn good. So it's a very close model. So I'm going to use my log x transformation. <coughs> sorry. Now, I need to actually state my equation. So I need basically the gradient and the constant to put into my equation. You can read them from here, but you do kind of have to hover over to be able to see them, and that's not great. So if I scroll two pages over, again here, don't touch it, 1.8, I look along the top until I get to my log x. So that's x squared, nope, 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 that's the one I want. Okay. Now this is again using the old um, model of mx plus b, okay, so in this case m is your gradient, so it's the thing that goes beside the variable, and b is the constant. Again, looking here, m is in the first um, ungrade row, and b is in the second. Okay. So that's going to be my gradient there, 0 0.02, rounding to three significant figures, so 0, 2, 0, 8. And then here, again, rounding to three significant figures, 0, 0, 5, 4, 5. So you'll just need to remember what those values are and pop them into your equation. So now looking back, we actually need to state the equations. So from the CAS, it did most of the work for us. It found out that the gradient was 0 0.0208, 
and the y-intercept 0, 0, 5, 4, 5. Okay. Now, when we state the equation, we've got a few things we need to remember. First of all, we need to remember to make the equation in terms of the variables, so not x and y, but data set and runtime. Um, and also, it's really important to remember to make the substitution. So I'm not looking at x, I'm looking at log base 10 of x. So those are the three pieces that are going to make my formula. So for this scenario, the runtime is equal the lonely number 0, 0, 5, 4, 5 plus the gradient 0 0.0208. Now again, it's not just data set or size, it's the log of that, because that's the transformation that we've made. Very, very common error. So I want to do times log of this size. Okay. When you don't write a base, it's assumed to be 10, so really it doesn't matter whether I put a 10 there or not. In this course, it will always be base 10. So the runtime is my RV, so that's like my Y. The gradient, sorry, the Y intercept, the lonely number, plus the gradient times, again, that's kind of your X, but we do make the substitution, so it's log of X, which is the log of the size. So. Let's get to actually, again, using this because we've done such a wonderful job of creating it. So use the equation to predict the runtime of a 70,000 item data set. Again, this is where it's really important that we've labeled our equation. So in terms of where we substitute, it's quite easy. So in this case, the runtime is equal to 0 0.00545 plus 0 0.0208 times log base 10 of 70,000. And then it's just a matter of typing that in the calculator. Okay, so here I go, I've typed it in the scratch pad, so I don't need to open a new document, I don't need to add a new page, it's a quick calculation for the scratch pad. So there's my y-intercept plus the gradient, and then I've made my transformation. Okay, Pressing enter, it's going to give me it in terms of a logarithm. I can then press control enter if I want it as a decimal. Okay. Okay. So control enter gives me this lovely value here, which is my runtime. Always do a quick che check for reasonability. Okay, so it's saying around 0.1 of a second for 70,000. Look at your data set and make sure that actually makes sense. So for our data set, 70,000 would be somewhere in here. Okay, and 0.1 seconds is somewhere in there. So that, that is a reasonable answer. Okay, so always do triple check that. It hasn't told me how to round, so I'll, I'll do three significant figures again. So one zero six. Zero point one zero six seconds. Again, that is right in between those two values, so I think I'm on the right track. Always do that quick mental check. Okay. Now the second part. Okay. We're asked to use the equation to predict the data size of a list which takes 0 0.1500 seconds to compute. Okay? So in this case, working backwards, I have the runtime, I need to figure out the equation. So in this case, the runtime is 0 0.1500. So just filling out the equation. Again, to solve this equation here means you need to use logarithms to solve. Most of us are uncomfortable with that, so let's just use the CAS to solve. Okay, so 
getting this solve. Okay, again, you can either type the word solve or menu 3, 1. So, solving that equation, typing everything in, remember you do your comma S at the end, pressing enter. Okay, so the size is around 8.9 million. Okay, so quite a large data set. Again, do the check that that makes some kind of sense. So 0.5 seconds. Okay, so to run a 1 million size data set, it took 1.2 seconds. So it should definitely be over 1 million. In this case, again, if you look, think about the curve, it did flatten out. So 1.5 being around 8.9 million does make some sense. So let's write that in. Okay, so the size is equal. Again, it didn't tell me how many significant figures. So let's um, just go to the nearest whole for our data set. So 8,902,648. So quite a large data set. Okay, and there we go. That's how we use our program. So using page primarily 1.6 and 1.8 to get my equation, and then substituting just using a scratchpad page. Um, make sure that you never save the program, because uh, you do want to make sure that it does maintain all the things that it should.